There's a real kerfuffle today. Somebody is stealing unpublished manuscripts and no one knows who or why. So today we're gonna be getting ready and fixing up all this shit. I just got out of the shower. We're gonna just chat about the scandal while I turn myself into Shrek. First, we need to brush this rat's nest of a hair. All right, that's a bit better. <laughs> Recently, there was an article that came out in the New York Times, and I'm linking it down below if you want to read the article. And in this article, it said, there is a phishing scam going around the publishing industry. It's an international scam. There are targets in not just the US, it was all over the place. It was like in Sweden, in Italy, etc. So all these people around the world are being targeted. Okay, so who is being targeted? I know this looks ridiculous. Well. Not only are authors being targeted, but agents, publishers, editors, basically everybody in the industry in all different roles has received emails requesting access to unpublished manuscripts. Now here's the important thing. You know when you receive those like Nigerian prince emails or like grandma, I'm, I'm trapped in like North Korea. I need you to send me money or whatever. These phishing emails are much more sophisticated than that because not only do they address the person like the author's name directly, but they sign the email from that author's agent. So it appears as if it's coming from that author's agent. By the way, author's agents are public information. You can go on literary agents' websites and you can figure out which authors they are representing. But here's another thing too. The emails are including really personal information and it's also including information that hasn't been released to the public yet. So for example, the article gives the case of this author, Cynthia Dittrich, Dittrich, I'll have to check that later. She had a debut novel in 2018 and it was called The Nest. It was kind of popular. She receives this email asking for the manuscript for her next novel. And in that email, it includes the names of her protagonist, which was not public information for the new novel and the deadlines that she needed to complete the script by. So the scammer has access somehow to this private information. They are requesting the manuscripts using lingo that is common Common, you know in the industry like so for example they'll ask for like a partial you know half the manuscript or they'll use the acronym MS instead of manuscript and now these are kind of simple but it's just another thing that further convinces the recipient of the email that this is actually from like their agent why don't the author just look at the email address right they know what their agent's email is well the scammer is taking their agent's email and is changing one letter or two letters to make it appear at a quick glance that it's the same email. I know I look ridiculous, you guys. I know this is crazy, but who cares? So for example, instead of saying, you know, penguinrandomhouse at gmail.com or whatever the email is, I'll put it up. Instead of using M, they're using RN. So it looks like M at first. Also, you know how your email doesn't reveal like someone's full email until you like click on it? The change only occurs once the email has been expanded, either through you replying or you clicking on the email. So if you're only just reading it from the bar at the top without expanding it, it appears to be the same email. Whenever mask is drying, I'm like, I can't move my face. I can't move my mouth. The doggies are playing with the toys and each other. You're gonna hear the animals chewing in the background. Also, I didn't do code coverage on my forehead. Anyway, which authors were targeted? Was it specific? Was there a pattern? Well, you had very high profile authors targeted like Margaret Atwood and Ian McEwen, Joe Nesbo. So something similar happened in the film industry a couple years ago when the original script is released online pretty publicly and then the person who posted it charges fans a ton of money for them to get an early glance at this script or a movie that hasn't yet been produced. Oh nice! People like Quentin Tarantino have been targets of this before. I think it was Hateful Eight. And he almost refused to release the actual movie because the script was released online. So it would make sense if high profile authors were being targeted, that manuscript was then posted online and people were trying to buy it, right? Well, this 
scammers are also targeting debut authors whose value arguably hasn't really been determined yet because you don't know how well their books will perform so like why go after debut authors or not well-known authors at all another thing that's interesting is the manuscripts have not appeared anywhere on the dark web and that sounds really like weird and scary but the people who have been trying to investigate this have been looking everywhere on the dark web for like terms like manuscript or ms or unpublished book or things like that and they cannot find any buyers or sellers at all now it's time for me to rinse this off it feels so fresh and it feels like a lot less irritated and inflamed So by targeting both high and low profile authors and by not even an obvious turnover market of selling them online for fans access, it's hard to determine what the actual motive is of these scammers or the scammer. This has been going on internationally for three years. For three years, agents, editors, and authors have been targeted and unfortunately a lot have fallen prey. Okay, I'm gonna get dressed now. By the way, my dad right now is ironing and listening to God is a Woman by Ariana Grande. Okay, so I've switched out of my day pajamas into my night PJs. Just having one of those kind of quarantine days today. An author who I mentioned earlier, Sweeney, was able to identify that the email sounded a little odd to her. Just the wording of it. Because she knows her agent pretty well and that's not really like how her agent words his emails. However, it was unnerving because, like I said, the scammer knew the names of her characters on a book that has not been published yet and has no real publicity about the characters' names yet. So that's private information that they were able to access. So what she did was she forwarded it to her agent, Henry, and Henry was like, oh my God, what the fuck? He was like, please do not send anything to this person. This person is not me. So what she decides to do is she emails the scammer and she said, please leave me alone. Like, never contact me again. You're not my agent. Scammer replies to her and says, of course I'm your agent. I know everything about your new book. What the fuck? Fortunately, Cynthia was lucky because she was able to sort of just pick up on it, the email being odd. Now, if this has been happening for three years, why are we suddenly finding out about it? Well, I think it took some time for people to realize this was happening not just on the scale of a company, but on the scale of countries. Another reason why I think we haven't found out about it until now, only until this past year, has the publishing industry in the United States been particularly targeted. Seeing the highest number of emails in the same time around the Frankfurt Literary Festival, which was held online. Also, if you are a budding author and you get an email from an agent and it, the address looks like that address of the agent, they have correct information on the name, they have correct information on you, they have correct information on your manuscript, it's going to be pretty convincing. So you might not question it. and. Remember in The Devil Wears Prada, Anne Hathaway has to go get the unpublished manuscript of the seventh Harry Potter book to the twins. It's like in hot demand. This was like the height of Harry Potter. But this is not that. And also, you know, if these manuscripts were being sold to fans, it would be all over the internet. Fans would be talking about the spoilers and whatnot. It would be shut down right away. Like we would know. With this, we don't know. The lighting in this bathroom is just terrible. Like I feel like I look much prettier than the lighting in the this video. Because nothing makes sense on a surface level, no one's benefiting from this except for the scammer. One theory is the scammer is somehow involved in the scouting literary world. So what I mean by scouting literary world is these are the people who negotiate publishing rights for international publishers, meaning like, you know, the rights in other countries. But more importantly, a literary scout also helps with film and television rights. So why is this important? Well, when dealing with television and film rights, before deals are made, the potential buyers of those rights get access to private information, full manuscripts. They get more information because they need to know where the story is going to see if it's viable enough for them to make a show or a movie out of it, right? So they get a storyboards, they get the manuscripts, they get extra information to see if they want to get the rights to produce the story. The only thing that sort of makes sense is like maybe if this person is in this 
this world. They're getting access to manuscripts they would never have otherwise have access to. There's a lot of money on the line when it comes to figuring out which stories to produce because if a story fails, like if a production fails, you lose There's millions of dollars, right? Only a couple months later or years later do you make your money back. A way that the film industry and the television industry tries to build insurance into the stories, like tries to justify basically their budget for production, which they don't know if will be successful or not, is one, they get really good actors or actresses because the star system effect, the star system is like the social pull of actors. If you have a famous actor or actress, you're more likely to have more sales because people will buy tickets just to see that person. Another, Another way is they pick stories they know are already selling. They pick books, they pick plays, they pick already successful things and they adapt them. This is where I don't get it. Like, if you're targeting a debut author's manuscript, there's no insurance that it will sell, right? Like, this goes back to why target debut authors anti-profile. Maybe you could argue that they're targeting uh, debut authors to cover up the fact that they're targeting only high-profile, but it's a a lot of debut authors have been targeted and it's a lot of effort but you know how those like Nigerian prince emails half the things are misspelled using the wrong grammar like the, it just it kind of looks like a scammer do you know what I mean like I know the shirt is extremely wrinkly not only is the information they're using correct but it's very well presented it could be the scouting someone in the scouting world which makes sense to me but what doesn't make sense is again why target stories that have not proven successful yet technically there's like no value in a manuscript if we don't know the value of the author yet, the commercial value of the author. And that's not to say debut authors are not valuable. You guys know what I mean. I'm just talking about monetary value. Oh my god. I look so much cuter in the mirror than I do here. Then again, it is important to note that, you know, a good story is a good story. And these television and film producers, these clients, understand what a good story is. So I'm not saying that debut authors have no value or their manuscripts have no value. It's just that they're not a case of success yet. They have haven't proven their success yet. Remember how earlier I said that just got close for a second. That Joe Nesbo was targeted, his agency. And then I'll show you guys the email that the scammer sent right here. When he was sent this email, they tried to track the IP address of the email and they connected it to this GoDaddy domain, which is like a, a server. The address was changed in 2018 and then it was most recently re-registered November 25th of this year. He or she keeps shifting their tactics and updating and, and getting more sophisticated. Penguin Random House and Simon and Schuster have sent out broad emails to everyone in the company, letting them know about the scammers, letting them know their tactics, and hopefully this will start to decrease the number of successful scams. The Telegraph also covered this subject and a couple other sites. I will include those links down below. I just don't have a Telegraph subscription. <laughs> so I only got to read the first paragraph of that, so I don't actually know what it said. But basically, if anyone else has more information on this, comment down below. Let me know if I left anything out. Let me know what you guys think because it's kind of weird right someone is collecting unpublished manuscripts and we don't know why and they're continuing to do so and they're they're very successful at it i'm literally like i'm just confused thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys for getting ready with me and my beautiful face I really appreciate you putting up with me. Like always, if you guys want more of these, I can give you more of them. And don't worry, I'm still gonna be doing book reviews and such. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Bye.